Good day, learners. Our topic is all about formation of ions. So last time, we used to talk about the different types of bond existing between compounds. These bonds existing between compounds are known as ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds. So right now, we will be dealing with how ions were formed. Here are the things that you will learn for today. First of all, you will know what ions are, the ionic bonding, the formula for ionic compounds, and the summary activities for this session. First, let's define what are bonds. Elements are made up of just one type of atom, sometimes joined to other atoms of same element by chemical bonds. This forms molecules such as chlorine. Compounds are formed when different elements chemically react and form bonds with each other. Example given is water or H2O. Here in the example, here in our in our example, water or H2O, the hydrogen binds with oxygen. Okay. Different types of bonds are formed depending on the types of atoms involved. Covalent uh, ionic bonding occurs between metal and non-metal atoms. Covalent bonding occurs between non-metal atoms only. All bonding involves changes to the number of electrons in the outer shell of an atom, following the octet rule. Okay. Why do atoms form bond? First of all, the reason is that they are seeking for stability or they seek to be stable. Okay. Bonds involve the electrons in the outer shell of atoms, or the outer shell is also known as the valence shell. Here in this example, the third energy level from the nucleus, you will count the first energy level, second and third energy level. The outermost energy level, energy level is the valence shell. The electrons in the valence shell are called the valence electron. Each shell has a maximum number of electrons that it can hold. Elect electrons fill the shells nearest to the nucleus first. Filled electrons, electron shells, are very stable. <coughs> Press on each of the shell to find out more. Now, how do atoms form ions? This is the main topic for today. An ion is an atom or group of atoms that has an electric charge, either positive or negative. Okay, it can be cation for positive or anion for negative. Atoms have an equal number of protons and electrons and so do not have an overall charge. Meaning, if an atom has an equal number of proton electron uh, protons and electrons within an atom, there is no charge at all because it has the same or it has a balanced count of positive and negative. However, if an atom with incomplete outer electron shell are unstable or what I mean is if the total count of proton do not tally with the total count of electron, there comes a time that it will form an ion. Okay? If the total count of proton is not tallying or not the same as the count of the electron, it will form an ion, be it cation or anion. Okay? By either gaining or losing electrons, atoms can obtain full outer electron shells and become stable just like the noble gases. There are some there is some special types of elements called the noble gases. It is the it is positioned on the rightmost part of your periodic table. And these elements are already stable. They, they do not actually need to bond with other atoms to become stable. The atom itself of those noble gases are already stable. Okay, When this happens, atoms have an unequal number of protons and electrons and so have an overall charge. This is how atoms become ions. Okay, To make things simpler, Ions are formed because of the imbalance or unequal number of protons and electrons. If the protons has more count or if it has more proton 
basically, the charge that it will carry is a positive one. It will become cation. Okay? And the other way around, if electrons is much higher compared to protons, it will carry a negative charge, making it anions. Okay? Now, let's talk about the forming of positive and negative ions. How does an atom become positive or negative ion? Again, as mentioned earlier, students, positive ions, if the total, the total protons is higher than the electron and the other way around, if electron is much higher, it will become a negative ion. Okay? How are ions formed? Later, students, I will show you a simulation on how ions are formed, okay? Now, let's talk about the compound ion. Okay, this compound ion are formed because of ionic bonding, okay? It can be made up of single atom or a group of atoms. An ion made up of a group of atoms is called a compound ion, okay? What atoms are uh, present in the following compound ions. Say, for an instance, we do have hydroxide. Okay? The formula is OH, then there is a, a superscript that is showing negative because the charge is negative 1. Okay? The atoms present in a hydroxide is oxygen and hydrogen. The other one here is negative. Okay? Meaning, one is cation, or I mean the total charge being carried by hydroxide is negative 1. Next is sulfate, SO4. Then you can see on the superscript, there is two negative, meaning it carries negative 2 charge. Nitrate, negative 1. Carbonate, negative 2. And ammonium, positive 1. So among these examples, hydroxide, sulfate, nitrate, and carbonate... <coughs> are all anions because they carry negative charges. However, ammonium is cation because it is carrying positive one charge. Now, students, just for, the, for, just for a glimpse in naming ions and compounds, compound ions, there are two common types of ions. It, sometimes it ends with IDE or yung hydroxide earlier and ATE or carbonate earlier, okay? What are their differences? Generally, IDE ions or compounds ending with IDE are negatively charged ions and an ele of an element sulfide, fluoride, oxide, and so on. These are negative ions, meaning uh, anions ito, students, yung IDE. The exception to this rule is the hydroxide ion, which contains hydrogen and oxygen. ATE ions are negatively charged compound ions that include oxygen, okay? Uh, negatively charged din siya, however, it is for a compound ions, okay? Sulfate, nitrate, and carbonate. Now, students, allow me to show you, uh, I will just change my sharing option, allow me to show you a simulation. Students, this is the simulation or the simulator that you can use in manipulating or building up your own atom, okay? Here you can see a broken line or the orbits. Uh, it represents the orbit for the broken lines, X for the nucleus, okay? Here we have three subatomic particles, the neutron, protons, and electrons, okay? We will use this one to... Uh, show to you how to form ions, okay? So first, let's add neutron at the center because neutron is in the nucleus of, this, uh, of an atom. Then next, let's add protons. As you can notice, it is a positive ion. Why? Because there is one proton and yet there is no electron. When we add electron, we are not adding this on its valence shell first. We should add this on the first energy level first, okay? Now, it 
uh, it goes to show that this one is a stable and neutral atom. Okay? For the sole purpose that protons and neutrons, I mean protons and electrons, have the equal number. We have one proton and one electron. That's why it is neutral or stable. But what if we will add another electron on the first energy level? It goes to show that negative ion na po siya. It is negative ion or anion na siya. Okay? Because there is more electrons compared to protons. Next, what if we will add another proton? Okay. What happens is that the actual the actual element changes okay from hydrogen it becomes helium let's add another neutron let's add another electron as you can notice students the electron goes on its valence shell okay dun na siya sa valence shell na punta because uh, two electrons for the first energy level is already enough Again, it, it is showing negative ion because we have three electron and only two protons. So the net charge that it is carrying is negative, okay? But what if we, if we will add another proton? Look, it becomes unstable because we have three protons. However, we only have two neutrons. So it will become unstable. So let's add another neutron. However, students, uh, uh, the charge becomes neutral because we have three proton and a three electron. Let's add another neutron. Then it will become stable. Okay? So that's how we form ions. If there is an imbalance in the total count of proton and electron, students, ion is always formed. Okay? It will just change or it will just depend on the, the total net charge the net charge being carried by that specific atom if it is positive or negative okay if it is positive it is a cation okay if it is negative it is an anion okay that's how ions were formed so try to use this simulator you can actually access fet.colorado.edu and then look for chemistry simulations and look for build an atom. And uh, ma makikita nyo na yung interface, okay? Just choose atom. Then you can manipulate the protons, electrons, and neutrons using your mobile, mobile phone.